welcome to Unlock Your Wellbeing, the podcast that teaches you the simple keys to health and happiness so that you can grow as a human being into a well-being. And now here's your host, author, certified wellness coach, mother, and wife, Alicia Leadham. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode. This is Alicia, your host of Unlock Your Wellbeing. I'm super uh, excited to sit down and record this episode for you guys because I am feeling really good right now. Like physically in my body, I am experiencing a little bit of an endorphin high because i I found my stride in working out again after um, a week, maybe two weeks of like zero workouts, okay? Now, that's kind of unlike me because I really like to make sure that I move my body every day in some way. That's a, a big mantra of mine. But to be honest, these past couple weeks have been pretty full in my life. Um, I have a 14 month old baby girl and she just got sick for the first time. Wow. Uh, shout out to all of the moms with sick children who need you every single second for days on end. Um, poor baby girl. She's much better now and it didn't last, um, terribly long and it was like her first, you know, real cold or virus or whatever it is that she had. She's totally fine. But, um, you know, being a first time mom, I like dropped everything, stopped everything, took care of her and definitely found putting myself and taking care of me on the back burner, including any kind of movement or workouts, like basically just bare minimum taking care of myself. Right. Um, and then before that, I have been in these like final sprints of finishing my book that's coming out. So if you um, are new here, I am publishing my first book called The Six Gold Keys to Wellbeing. It's coming out in um, the spring. We don't have an exact date, but it's getting much closer. Uh, So much closer, in fact, that, you know, all of the work is happening up in here behind the scenes. And so um, every second, every three second that I get, I'm working on that because I have deadlines, you know? So my point is that um, life had taken over and I found myself not getting my workouts in, okay? Or moving in any way. And so this happens from time to time. It's totally fine. There's no reason for us to, you know, um, beat ourselves up because of it. But I am going to take you through a process of some things that you can do to motivate yourself to kind of getting back into the swing of things or just to get any workout in, whether it's been, um, you know, uh, seven days, seven weeks, or seven months. Um, so this is kind of my process of how I like to do things that has helped me, especially when I'm just so not motivated, right? Like when you haven't worked out in a while, you, your motivation for doing it is so much less. You just don't want to because you, um, haven't been doing it. Right. And so that's one of the first things that I like to remind myself is uh, how good I'll actually feel when I'm done with it. Okay. This is actually one of my um, big tips that I wrote in the book, uh, in the book about my third key, which is the gold key of movement. I digress. Okay. So focusing on how you, how you'll feel once you feel you're finished. Okay. And so not thinking about how it's going to feel when you're doing it, but instead thinking about how it's going to feel in your body when you're done. Try not to think about how you're looking, you know, because I'm not doing this to look a certain way. I mean, that's obviously a like cherry on top, but that's not the primary motivation, right? The primary motivation is to feel a certain way. And I need those endorphins. You need those endorphins. That's how we want to feel better. That's how I'm feeling so much better today, right? After 
everything I just explained to you in my life. Um, and I'm sure you're going through something like that in your own life too. You know, what you're telling yourself is that you're too tired for it. There's, I feel like there's definitely a distinction between I'm genuinely exhausted and the best thing for me is to rest versus I'm, I'm too tired and I don't want to. But really tuning in with yourself of, you know, of what that, what that is and then what that looks like. And then in terms of what to do uh, moving forward or like what workout to actually do, that's also where I like to, to tune in with myself as well, right? Of, okay, what would feel really good in my body right now? Because different exercises make you feel differently. And if you want to feel better and feel a certain way at the end, certain ways of moving your body is going to, right, tap into that um, and make you feel a certain a certain way, like I just said. So maybe, for example, you want to feel more energized and like super strong. Um, you might turn to lifting weights, okay? Or perhaps you are super stressed and like you can feel that stress in your body, like you're holding onto it and you want to feel when you're finished with the workout, like more um, just flexible a little more loose in your body, a little bit more open, then maybe you practice some yoga, okay? And like a slow yoga flow um, or even a restorative yoga class. I do this quite a bit sometimes. Like I've noticed um, even as I'm like, you know, in this final push of like laboring essentially of um, publishing my book into the world, sometimes when I tune in, it feels the best for me to just roll out my yoga mat here in my office after a long sprint of work and pull up a restorative yoga class and just do some deep relaxing restorative yoga to just get my blood moving and um, basically just lay there in very amazing healing poses right Um, okay another example is maybe you want to kind of access like that runner's high, okay, and really just get your heart pumping and you just want to feel um, super, super energized and like, you know, the runner's high. So you would go out for a walk or perhaps you'd go for a run outside. Um, So I always like to start by asking myself, how do I want to feel? And then that will lead me intuitively into what um, specific workout that I and drawn to doing in that moment, right? Um, Now, the other thing that I like to do to really help me uh, get motivated, especially after a while of not doing anything, is starting slow and giving yourself permission to starting slow, okay? Try to refrain from being an all or nothing person um, and or a I'll start Monday person and just start right now. Start where you are with where you're at. I said that in, in like some previous podcast episodes, but that's important, right? Just start where you are um, and, and go from there. And so give yourself permission to start slow. And this might be a 10 or 15 minute workout. This might be like, okay, if I'm going to um, lift weights right now for 15 minutes, they might you might do like a more basic um, workout just to like, remember how it feels to move. Okay. Um, so that's always been really helpful for me. And then, um, over the course of a few days, then you start to like, kind of get back into your flow. Uh, if it hasn't been that long, if it's been like months and months, or, you know, if you just had a baby, um, that, time period of easing back into it and moving slowly back into it will be a little bit longer of a time period, but it's totally fine to not have to like go super hard all in right away, especially when you're unmotivated or when you just need to like, you know, get back into it. Um, okay. The other thing that is helpful is to, uh, have a little bit of variety. So sometimes when we're unmotivated, we're just bored. And the last thing that you want to do to motivate yourself to move is to be bored of what it is that you're doing. So what are some things you can do to 
make it less boring and make it more fun. Um, One of my uh, mentors over the years, she always says, when you're feeling stuck or unmotivated in something, ask yourself, how can I make this feel fun like Friday night and easy like Sunday morning? Uh, So I like to ask myself that in, you know, really any area of my life that I'm feeling stuck in. And this could be one of them uh, for you. So what are some things that you could do to make it more fun or to mix it up and not like shame yourself that you don't want to do, you know, a program or something that you're still in. Like, for example, if you've been running for years and years and now you just don't want to run anymore or you're just not motivated to do it or it's just boring you, give yourself permission to move on and do something else. Or with yoga. Maybe you've been practicing yoga forever and it's just not exciting you like it used to. Um, it's totally fine to give yourself permission to try something else. That doesn't mean that you're saying goodbye to it forever, that like you're not a yogi anymore because you're not practicing yoga every single day or even for the next few months. Like we go through seasons and phases of our routines, um, just like the seasons, right? The four seasons, it changes but it doesn't mean it it won't come back to that season again. Um, So I think that's really important to find something that uh, interests you and excites you and um, do that and mix it up often in what it is that you're doing. Or if you know you want to still do the thing that you're doing, right? Maybe you do still want to continue to run or you do want to still continue to to practice yoga but you're just feeling a little bit blah around it then how can you mix it up within the thing that you're doing so running maybe you try a new trail um, or a different um, route that is new to you maybe you download and find new music Okay, music is a really, really big motivator that can help to shift your mood and your energy. That helps a lot. Same thing with yoga, right? Okay, maybe it's time to um, try a different teacher, try a different style, download some new music, get a new prop, or um, go to a new class, right? Just try to mix it up within what it is that you're currently doing. I find that that helps quite a bit. Um, or if you like to work out um, using any apps, finding a different app or a different program can really uh, encourage you and motivate you really easily. Um, some of my favorite uh, apps or people that I like to follow for their workouts are, um, one is uh, the Tone It Up Girls. I've actually been using their app for quite a while and on their app, I use, okay, I'm going to pull it up right now. There is a program that I did of theirs um, to get me back in shape after I had my baby. It was their weightlifting program, their strength training. Which one is it called? I'm looking it up here, you guys. Um, uh, was it Total Body Strength? I can't remember. It was like a six-week program. Uh, anyway, it's on here, um, on their app, tone it up. I'm not, you know, an affiliate for them, but they just have some cool stuff. Okay. They have some good stuff. Uh, who else do I follow? The fitness Easta. She ha- uh, has a bunch of free workouts on her website, thefitnessisa.com. She also has some programs that you can purchase. I know in recent years, I've been following her for many, many years, but um, I'm pretty sure she has some that you can purchase there. Uh, I have a, a colleague um, and friend. We've actually were in state track together in high school, but she uh, has a business um, where she does a lot of workouts as well. Um, And her name is Erica Hermsen. Um, I will have in the description box her Instagram uh, that you can follow and check out some of her great workouts. She does like a lot of live videos and workout programs and things like that. Um, There was one other person that I was going to tell you guys about, but... Now, I can't remember. Oh, I find a lot of really good workouts on uh, Pinterest as well. So 
you know, having that kind of variety with different people and different apps uh, are really helpful with kind of mixing it up and helping you to feel a little bit more motivated. Also, I really want to highlight the importance of music. I know I just said that in some of the examples, but music can really shift and move your motivation very quickly. So if you um, are feeling stagnant, new music. If you want, you can follow me on Spotify and I have um, a bunch of playlists that I listen to that I've created. Um, Some of them are free for you to follow in public when I mean, when I say free, not all of them are private. Um, So you can go check that out for some inspo for yourself. Um, And then the other thing that might feel a little superficial, but I swear that it works is new workout clothes. Okay. So getting any kind of new workout, um, outfit or new shoes or anything. Like if you really need that extra kind of boost, that helps a lot. Uh, or even a new pair of headphones. If you really need to like dig deep and get some new, um, inspiration to kind of motivate yourself again. Okay. Okay, and then one other um, like simple tip to help you in the moment. So let's say you're kind of in your flow and you aren't trying to like get super, super back in or it hasn't been a long time since you've worked out, but you're just not feeling it that day and you just kind of like mm, don't really want to. Um, using aromatherapy, using essential oils are actually a really cool way to energize you and give you tons of of energy. Okay. So this is a trick of using oils to give you energy. I like to call this my peppermint orange bomb. Okay. So all you're going to need is, uh, some peppermint essential oil and some wild orange essential oil. Now peppermint, uh, is a natural energizer and orange is a natural mood uplifter. And so using both of them together is going to uplift your mood and energize you. So what you're going to do to do this bomb is you just take one or two drops of each oil and put it into the palm of your hand. Then you rub both of your palms together, getting the oils around them, and then cup your nose and take like three to five really, really deep breaths in of the aroma in of the constituents. So breathe it in. It's going to wake you up. It's going to wake up your sinuses. It's going to give you energy almost instantly. Then with the rest of the residue, just tap. I like to like pat that into the back of my neck. Um, and that's just like, you guys, it's instant. It gives you this super cool boost and you are just ready to go. Um, I have done this and use this for motivation really for many things. Um, but for the sake of this podcast itself, uh, I love doing this trick to kind of get me motivated to go do the workout. And again, focusing on how you want to feel and the endorphins that will be released are really, really um, powerful to think about. That's going to kind of move you into just getting yourself to do it for the sake of feeling better. This podcast episode is brought to you by the book, The Six Gold Keys to Wellbeing, A Guide to Living a Happy and Healthy Life. This book will be released in spring of 2022, and you can sign up to be the first to be notified of when the book is released to the public to purchase on Amazon. Head to alishaleadum.com right now and go sign up for the launch list to be notified of when this book is going to be released in to the world. Okay, welcome to our Ask Alicia segment. So I have a great question that I have been asked um, around this topic of motivating yourself when you just don't feel motivated. So this question is from Brittany. She asks, I used to love doing yoga. Yoga with Adrian on YouTube is my fave, but now when I come home, I am done. I just want to go to bed. 
I'm mentally drained from all the people and being positive all day. I have three kids, so my evenings are crazy. What are so some, some suggestions to get myself motivated to do yoga again? Even my kids want to do it, and I say, eh, maybe tomorrow. What is wrong with me? Okay, Brittany, first, there's nothing wrong with you. This is very normal, and as you've heard throughout this podcast, um, a lot of things that you're feeling are totally, totally normal, and we all experience this from some time to time. So the first thing that I would say is to make sure that you release this belief that there's anything wrong with you, because there's nothing wrong with you, first and foremost. Secondly, it does seem like there is some... Um, uh, drainage happening where rest would serve you more than yoga or movement in general. It sounds like you are just absolutely exhausted. And so having that time to truly rest might be more helpful for you on those days that you are feeling the way you do. Because it seems and sounds like you work all day and you have to you know, bring it in being positive with the people that you work with. And then you come home and you're taking care of your three kids. So you're a super mom and you're doing a lot, right? And so when we are in this place of feeling like um, doing something for ourselves, like practicing yoga is just another thing to do that like you just can't, then that's your opportunity, in my opinion, to take a step back and say, okay, what would fill me up right now? What do I genuinely need to feel supported and to feel taken care of, taken care of by my, by me and by myself? And maybe that's a bath. Okay. Maybe that is some time alone where, uh, your partner can do the dishes and take care of the kids after dinner where you get to go and meditate and just have your time to yourself. If it's like 20 or 30 minutes, that would serve you a little bit more than, um, you know, practicing the yoga, that clearly there's a lot of resistance there to that. Now, if you really want to move or when you do find that you are in the place that you would like to, you know, exercise and get some movement in, then I would take one of my suggestions that I recommended earlier in this episode and find something that will excite you to do and that it doesn't have to be yoga anymore. I know what it feels like when you're like, oh, this is so weird. Like I used to be so inspired and I used to love like doing this and now I don't anymore. Like why not? Um, Specifically with yoga. And I think that it's totally fine that, you know, sometimes we just need to be inspired by doing something different and changing up our routine. And that could be if it could still be yoga, um, but maybe you find a different teacher that will inspire you who has a different angle or a different kind of energy. Um, Or it's a completely different exercise. Maybe going for a walk outside would inspire you or lifting weights in the morning before you go to work instead of saying that you have to do yoga when you get home, right? So just ask yourself, what can I do differently or what I like to do differently um, that will genuinely fill me up And if I could choose what that is and really listen to myself, what would that be? And that why can't I force myself to keep doing something that clearly isn't working for me um, anymore? Okay, so I hope that that helped you. I trust that it did. And um, please let me know how that goes for you. Thanks for uh, asking a question to be featured on the podcast. Um, and thank you guys all so much for being here on this episode. I'd love to hear what your biggest takeaway was. You can head over and follow me on Instagram at Alicia Leadham, connect with me over on LinkedIn at Alicia Leadham, um, and share with me what your biggest tip was and how you are motivating yourself to get your movement in and get yourself some high of these endorphins that I'm like completely feeling. After a little bit of not having them, like I met, you know, my whole story at the beginning of this podcast, I was uh, getting ready after I worked out and showering. I'm like, oh, yes, 
I feel so good. Thank you, endorphins. Like, this is why I move. It's to feel good. That's why. So I hope that this inspires you. Thank you for joining me. And I will see you guys on our next uh, episode of Unlock Your Wellbeing. Head over to alishaleedham.com to learn more about how we can connect. Namaste. Namaste.